Hey, YouTube, Sam, back at you again. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm going to get um, straight on into this story. Um, this is something that's been, um, uh, it, it, it got hot on CNN um, either last night or night before last in regards to um, the what is going on with the abuse in the Catholic Church in Pennsylvania and in other places. And I'm just going to say, say this, and my intent is not to hurt anybody's feelings or to disregard anyone's personal beliefs or religion. Um, whatever you believe in and choose to do, that's on you. Um, I don't have to answer for it. But let me say this right here. Ever since I was a little girl, there has always, I mean, always been talk about how these priests and these archbishops and cardinals be abusing these kids. What I don't understand is how is it that the Catholic religion is held at a different standard when it comes to the, the sexual abuse of these kids? Why is it that these bishops, these archbishops and cardinals and these priests are moved around the world like chess pieces on a, on, on a chess board? Oh, you fucked up right here. Okay, so we're going to take you from right here and we're going to put you in this place. It's not a big city and it's not a big town. So people may have heard of you. They may not have heard of you. But we anyway, we're going to put you right here. Now, if you fuck up again, then we're going to move you. And guess what they do? They go and do it again. They don't serve any time in prison. Why? I need someone to answer that for me. Please chime in and put the, put the answer down at the bottom of this video. Why is it that the Catholic re religion is held at a different standard when it comes to sexual abuse of the children in, the, in their church? I will wait, but while I'm waiting, I'm going to continue this story. D.C. Cardinal tied to Pennsylvania abuse probe. Local archbishop-led di diocese during period now being investigated. Mm, mm, mm. The groundbreaking investigation into sexual abuse at the Catholic Church in Pennsylvania has raised questions about Cardinal Donald Worrell who spent 18 years as the Bishop of Pittsburgh and now serves as the Archbishop of Washington, right here in D.C. The grand, the grand jury depicts Wolves' actions in Pennsylvania as mixed, at times stopping abusive priests from continuing in their ministries and at other times guiding them right back into parishes. You see what I'm saying? You are straddling the damn fence. This is what I don't understand. If you're going to be on the side of right, be on the damn side of right. Don't be on the side of right when you can benefit, but then you teeter-tottering back and forth over to the damn wrong, to the dark side. I mean, damn, man, you are a priest when you are supposed to be upholding the laws and the commandments of God at a higher standard than us other lowly Christians. Or the, uh, us, us lowly believers, let me put it that way, uh, us lowly believers. And y'all up in the church, y'all abusing these altar boys, y'all abusing all these people up in the damn church, and y'all don't even get no time. All y'all do is get pushed around like a damn crap, a herd of cattle. Anyway, let's continue. The Pennsylvania Grand Jury investigation, which probes six dioceses histories dating back to 1947. Damn, my mom won't but two years old. I mean, damn. And, man, this is, man, come on, let's continue. And alleges, man, y'all killing me with that alleged shit. When are y'all going to stop saying alleged? If this person is doing this and you know that they're doing it, it's no longer alleged. It's not alleged. It, you know. Y'all kill me. I'm going to tell y'all, and I don't want this to keep going over y'all head. When y'all read the newspaper, I mean, you actually pick up a newspaper and you read a newspaper. When they say, when you read a sentence and it's a certain key word that they use in that sentence, take a highlighter and highlight that word. If you don't know it, Go on Google on your phone and look up what that word means. 
When you see what that word means, then you can continue on with the story. But I'm telling y'all, they put they be putting keywords up in the story. And trust me, we're gonna come across a few more as I continue on through this story. Anyhow, let's continue. Okay, okay, history is dating back to 1947 and alleges that more than 300 priests abused more than 1,000 children. Man, shut the damn front door. So you telling me you got all these priests that the sit up there and abused all these children. Let me tell you something. You tell me all this cootie cat out here in this world. Every last one of them got a piece of wood. But you telling me you got all this cootie cat out here in the world and y'all don't want to go get no grown cootie? Oh, y'all want to mess with these little kids, something that y'all can control. So you got a thousand children that have been mentally fucked up at the hands of somebody who says they serve the almighty God. I want y'all to think about that. You telling me you coming to us as a servant of the almighty, the most high, the sweet Holy Spirit. You come here telling us that you come in his name to serve us and to give us guidance and to, so that we can, you know, get closer to him spiritually, mentally, emotionally. And at the same time, you talking to the adults all the time. You tickling under her daughter's dress or or you rubbing on her son's knee. So so you telling me that the Catholic Church approves sexual abuse toward children. Let me let me bring something else to the forefront. A lot of y'all may not realize either. And y'all may not have paid attention. You'd be like, oh, that's a beautiful building. Have you ever noticed that when you go to a city or a area and it's a Catholic church, notice how big that church is. They're going to have the highest steeple. They're going to have the highest steeple. They want you to see Oh, yeah, we Catholic right here. They're going to have the, I'm t- <clears throat> it's, a, it's a Catholic church in D.C., the biggest Catholic church. You're going to know you at, you're gonna know where you at when you see that church. I can't think of the name of it, but I promise you, if, if y'all don't notice, y'all take a look. Catholic churches are the biggest churches, are the tallest. They have the tallest steeple, if you want to call it a steeple. They have the tallest. You're going to recognize the Catholic Church by the way it's built and, and how the steeples or, or, or the columns are on the church. You're going to know. Have you ever noticed that? Why is that your church got to be, be the biggest? You got that much to cover up? And I got some else about, about these big old mega churches that these people are getting, in, getting into. Let me... Man. Lord, that's a whole nother video, but I'm going to get on into this. I'm going to continue. All right. So, more than 300 priests abused more than 1,000 children comes at a time when the Washington Archdiocese is already reeling. Theodore McCarrick, who preceded World as Archbishop of Washington from 2001 to 2006, stepped down last month from the Colleges of Cardinals becoming the first American cardinal in history to resign because he was accused of sexual abuse. Now, let me tell you something right there. If you didn't do anything, why are you resigning? Oh, you don't want to bring no shame to the school. That's what you're going to say. You're going to be that humble that you don't want to bring shame on the school or you don't want to bring shame to yourself. But see, you shouldn't be shamed that it's out in public because you did it in private. You telling me what you're doing in private is so shameful that if it got out in public that you couldn't live your life? I mean, why do something in private if you're not willing to do it in public? I mean, I'm just saying. I mean, that's just me. Let's continue. 
On Tuesday, upon the release of the report, World defended his conduct in Pittsburgh. I believe the report confirms that I acted with I acted with diligence, with concern for the victims and to prevent future acts of abuse, he said in his statement. How in the hell can you say that bullshit right there? That's not even no holy shit. That's bullshit. How can you say that right there when the same people again, let me read this one more time so y'all can understand why I'm going to dig into his ass when he said this. The grand jury depicts World's actions in Pittsburgh as mixed at times, stopping abusive priests from continuing their, their ministries and other times guiding them right back into the parishes. So you're going to stop them from abuse by telling them they can't go there, but then you're going to turn around, give them leniency, and put them right back in the same damn shit they was doing. So how can you tell me that you prevented future acts when you put their ass, when you done took the snake out of the damn... You done took the fox out the hen house, okay? You done put new barbed wire on the hen house. You done stapled it down real good. So now the chickens feel comfortable. The, the hens feel comfortable. They in their new house. You know, they got new barbed wire. They protected and all that other shit. But then, you know, the, the farmer decides, you know what? I'm going to see exactly what these hens going to do. I'm going to leave the gate open. Guess what? The fox come back in there. You come outside the next morning. You mad because all your all your hands is dead. What the fuck? You let the you let the fox in there. You done put the man back in the same community that he raping. What sense do that make? And then you got the nerve to say you want to prevent future abuse. How can you prevent future abuse when you putting them right back in the same thing? Man, get the fuck out of here. You listen. I'm gonna say this one more time. And I don't mean, y'all got to excuse my language. I don't mean to say this in front of y'all sweet little babies. So y'all got to forgive me. And for all y'all Christian folk out there, you know, I apologize for my language. I know it's very unbecoming as a lady. But I promise you, I'm a lady. But sometimes you got you, you just got to take the gloves off and you just got to get raw and you just got to be straightforward and honest because I don't want to, I don't want y'all to continue to be sleep. Some of y'all are lulled to sleep. Some of y'all need to hear what I'm saying because it's the truth. I mean, I, I don't mean no disrespect to anybody, but the Catholic Church has been doing this for thousands of years, hundreds of years. This is something that's been going on with the Catholics since the beginning of the time. It ain't nothing for them to be in all kind of orgies, all kind of crazy stuff going on. Y'all better know y'all history about this Catholic, about these Catholics, man. They ruthless. Catholics that had some of the best people killed. Please understand that. You ain't got to believe me. Go on your history channel. It, it, it's a proven fact. You look at all these mobsters. You look at all these um these mobsters um movies and and um like the drug lords El um not El Chapo Pablo Escobar they Catholics man think about it think about it anyway let's continue but some advocates for victims of clergy sexual abuse criticize world upon reading the report. I don't feel very comfortable with world voting for the next pope if the opportunity arises in the next few years, said Terry McKernan, founder and president of the organization Bishop Accountability. Well, I don't mean no harm. That little statement that you made that you don't feel comfortable. Okay, you may not feel comfortable, but you just going to have to deal with the bullshit that he's going to move on to the next city. Trust me, he's going to do the same thing there if it ain't already happening already. So it doesn't matter how you feel. They don't give a shit about your feelings. And they don't give a damn about these little kids that they're abusing. Then we wonder why these kids out here killing their parents. Then we wonder why these kids out here lost in the brain. We wonder why these kids out here turning to these crazy ass drugs that they doing, all these stupid challenges that they doing. You wonder why you think some of these kids ain't been abused by the, some of these priests and these bishops and, and arch and archdioceses and all that? Come on, man. 
Y'all better get with it and stop hiding behind the cloth. Let me say this, and I'm going to say it, and I'm going to keep saying it. I'm going to keep saying it until somebody, that light bulb goes off in, in y'all head. And it, it might be for some of y'all already. And if you know somebody that the light bulb is still off, share this video with them. Let me tell you something. Not everybody that gets behind that pulpit, put on that robe, and call themselves a man of the cloth is a man of God. Let me say that one more time. Just because you see somebody in the pulpit preaching a sermon, sweating a little bit, might shed a tear or two or whatever, um, that does not mean that they were called by God. You got a lot of people now that would go to school, get a degree in theology, and guess what? Next thing you know, they got a church. I'm telling you, around here in this area, churches, and, and, and they little churches, they popping up everywhere. Every time. I mean, they taking little trailers and putting, making them churches. I'm telling you, man, it, it, I'm like, what is going on? But let me tell you something. It's so much, it's so much stuff that goes on in the church. You'd be like, hmm. But won't you just shout me? The other day, what? Let me tell y'all something. You'd be surprised at the people that that call themselves Christian. They're more Christian than they are spiritual. I mean. They have this nice, nasty attitude with them. They'll be nice to you, but their undertone and their tone of their voice is very, very cunning and nasty. And I'm telling you, I run into one or two of them all the time. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't go to church like I used to. Um, it's just things I've seen and heard people say in the church, and, and, and I notice that it's very clickish very clickish it's i mean with some people if you're not living in a certain neighborhood you ain't got a certain kind of car you ain't you ain't making a certain kind of income and all of those stuff a lot of them won't even acknowledge you they won't even look at you you say if you see them out in public somewhere oh they mm -mm. but it's you you got a few of them that's real you know that's pretty cool laid back you know you somebody you can laugh and talk with or whatever the case may be but some of them other ones, boy, ooh, mm -mm. I'm like, nah. And the things you hear people saying, this is leadership. This is leadership in the church. You hear them talking all kind of stuff, and you hear certain things. Even um, some of the men in the church, one of the ladies that used to attend the church, you know, we were talking. And she was like, girl, the men up in here or something else. I said, honey, I ain't even looking for no man up in here. And I don't I don't look for no man in my church. I mean, I don't even pay no attention. Okay, I come to hear the word. Okay, I'll give you my couple dollars. Okay, now I'm out. And you go to church now, They so the, the sermons are so watered down. It's just like, okay, we hear what you're saying. I know how you're saying we can apply this to today, okay, and that's fine. But at the same time, is that really changing anything or anybody? It might. But guess what? They're going to go home and go back and do the same thing that they were doing before they left. You ain't preaching nothing that's going to change nothing. Very, I mean, some people do change. Some people don't change. But at the same time, I mean, everybody wants to be lulled to sleep and coddled. But anyway, that's all I got. And, um... It's a damn shame that the that the Catholic Church is not held at a different standard. Had that been any other church, had that been a Presbyterian, had that been an Episcopal, had that been at a Church of God in Christ, had that been at a Baptist or any other church, and that was a minister, he'd be in jail. And I'm going to tell you how I know because I did a video on it about maybe three, four months ago. Y'all, y'all better open your eyes. So you telling me that the Catholic is it's okay for the bishop, the archbishop, the archdiocese, and the priest 
it's okay for them to have sex with little boys, little girls. I don't understand. Y'all don't want the priest to be married, but y'all ain't got no problem with them fornicating with the kids. Hmm. Okay. I wish somebody would send me an answer. If you are Catholic, I need you to chime in and give me an answer. Or if you know somebody who is Catholic, share this video so that they can answer my question. I mean, I'm not disrespecting no one's religion or belief. I mean, I'm a believer. I believe in the higher power. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Yes, I do. Um, but I need somebody to answer this question for me in regards to the Catholics and what's going on with them abusing these kids. Because this has been going on for centuries, and it seems like it, it gets worse. Nobody cares, and nobody wants to hold, hold them accountable. So at this point of the game, I mean, they no different than any other pedophile. They just pedophiles. And some of them get into get into this religion just so that they can do that. And y'all don't even see it. They are pedophiles. They are groomed ped pedophiles. But anyway, that's all I got. Um, y'all have a good evening. Peace out. And share this video with your other Catholic people so they know what's going on up there in PA and Pennsylvania. And shout out to all my people in Pennsylvania and Philly and Easton and you know all y'all shout out. Y'all be good, be safe, gone.